it up to uh, Steph for sure, I think, or Erica, I'll leave it. Whoever can do it, can do it. Okay, uh, and we are now live. We're so. live, okay. So uh, have we, is Fraser joined? Not yet, but he's been given the phone in information and sent another Zoom link. Okay, well, we're gonna proceed. It is uh, <clears throat> 5.08, please excuse me. I have a little bit of a cold, so um, bear with me. If you can't hear me, don't be, uh, don't be shy to ask me to repeat and I'll try to speak clearly and, and uh, make sure that uh, <clears throat> hopefully my message gets across. So we would like to open the Victoria County Municipal Council meeting for Monday, January 10th, 2022. And the agenda has been circulated to you. Are there any additions or deletions to the agenda? Sorry, I guess I didn't. I don't. I didn't see an updated agenda, but I did ask uh, if uh, there could be something added to the agenda. What was it? <laughs> oh uh, dear. It was, uh, street lights. Yes, street, street light policy, thank you. Okay. We will add that under or after Department of Transportation and Public Works items, okay? Thanks. Thanks, uh, so we've added that street light policy. Are there any other additions or deletions? We have made that change. Thank you. It's been moved by Councilor McNeil. Do we have a seconder, please? Just put your hand up. And you Second. could. Second by the Deputy Warden. All in favor? Contrary minded. Motion is carried. The agenda has been approved. So, certainly, uh, just before we open the meeting, just two quick items. Just uh, want to welcome uh, everybody this evening and certainly to Council and staff. I uh, uh, would certainly personally would like to wish you a happy new year. So, happy new year to everyone. And uh, certainly on behalf of council, we certainly want to wish a happy new year to all our residents and uh, we'll extend that uh, good wishes to uh, all residents of the municipality. I would also like to acknowledge that this meeting is being held in the Unamagi, one of seven traditional districts of the Mi'kmaq and ancestral and unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq people. So with that, we're gonna open our council session tonight. Our first item, Tonight, as we have a presentation from the Cape Breton Partnership, and uh, we have several representatives from the partnership here this evening. And I believe that uh, Tyler will uh, start the conversation and introduce the staff. And just before we do that, I just want to mention that uh, MLA Keith Bain has joined us as well. So, welcome, Keith. So, with that, Tyler, I'm going to turn it over to you and uh, let you direct the traffic and the presentations as we move forward. Awesome. Uh, thank you, uh, thank you, Warden, and uh, um, thank you for the opportunity, uh, Council. It's our pleasure to be here uh, to present an economic development update. Uh, my name is uh, Tyler Mathis. I'm the acting president and CEO of the Cape Breton Partnership, and I'm here with a number of our of our staff. Um, the uh, the one that you're most familiar with being Erica Holgate, the economic development officer uh, for Victoria County. And um, Erica is also our technical, technical uh, advancer here. So uh, th thanks for that, She's right on the ball. There's a, a snapshot of our, our folks that support uh, Victoria County and uh, as part of the Cape Breton uh, Regional Enterprise Network. Um, Shannon McNeil, our business planning advisor. Um, myself um, and uh, Kelly McKinnon, who will be um, introduced uh, a little bit later. We have one vacant position, our creative economy development officer that we hope to, to fill soon. Um, Carly Appleton uh, with communications and uh, Jessica McDonald and, and Mickey Freeman. And you'll hear from Jessica as well later. Um, our vision is simply a thriving Cape Breton Unamagi. And uh, we're proud to, to, to achieve that vision uh, with the work um, that we do in partnership with Victoria County. Uh, we promote, as you know, you've heard us said, say before, we promote this place as a great place to live and invest, a culture that values and celebrates creativity, entrepreneurship, innovation, and we connect the Victoria County entrepreneurs to the, and companies to the resources they need to succeed through a vast network. Um, we are proud to have our work underscored by um, private sector partners who invest in us um, to invest in the, in the broader work of a thriving island. And if you hold up your smartphone to that QR code on your agenda, it'll take you to uh, our list of our current uh, investors. Um, the Regional Enterprise Network, just briefly for those who are less familiar, it uh, is a provincial initiative. 
the Cape Breton Partnership administers both of those networks on Cape Breton Island and the Cape Breton uh, Regional Enterprise Network, the one that uh, Victoria County belongs to along with Inverness, Richmond, the town of Port Hawkesbury, and uh, four of the five First Nations uh, here on our island. Um, then next slide here. Oh yes, uh, of course, the uh, CB Ren Board of Directors. Uh, mo many of these don't need any uh, introduction themselves, but we're proud to have a diverse set of uh, board members, um, many of which from, from uh, no, no stranger, Osborne and Jen in, in particular, uh, directly in Victoria County. And then those uh, five are part of our larger board of directors on the next slide. And I won't go through them all, but it's a broad cross section of the many businesses that, uh, that uh, we, uh, we value as our partners, as investors, and, uh, and who bring a di great diversity to our island. I'll draw your attention to the last four on the right. Um, there are four newest board members, Vivek Saxena from the NSCC Strait Area Campus, Ron Blinkhorn from Casino Nova Scotia, Alicia Jador from Escazoni Corporate, and Adam Bateman from the Business Development Bank of Canada that we work with regularly, and we're excited to have them join the board. Um, and with the next slide, um, I'll introduce Erica, and uh, I think she needs no introduction, but we're proud to have her part of our team, and uh, we're thank you for the opportunity. Had to unmute myself. <laughs> so since I started on August 9th, uh, I really tried to hit the ground running. Uh, in my first few months, I've met with staff from both the partnership and Victoria County. I've met with several of you and toured many of the districts uh, where I got to meet several different businesses. And I've tried to learn everything I possibly can about partnering organizations and funding sources, which is still honestly a work in progress. Uh, but in my first five months of the position, I've learned that most of what I do falls under one of these three categories, supporting local business, attracting new business and investment, and coordinating economic development projects. Uh, you'll see a few general examples there, but I'd like to say that a, quite a bit of my time has actually been spent on number two, which I think is ref reflected in this next slide. Uh, in 2021, 45 new files were started in Victoria County. Of those, five were maintaining or improving a business, eight were business expansions, 14 of them were business startups or exploring entrepreneurs, and 13 of those were economic development files. Um, something I'd like to point out that of the 20 active client files, which would be about 20 individual businesses, there's representation from each district in Victoria County. I read a statistic that Victoria County has more entrepreneurs per capita than anywhere else in Nova Scotia, and I'd like to say we're keeping that trend going. Shannon McNeil, our business planning advisor, year to date has opened 24 uh, new business plans. So those business planning service enables entrepreneurs to take their ideas and turn them into professional and well-rounded documents for use in business startup activities, loan applications, and many other uses. Uh, in addition to those 24 new business plans, 15 files also carried over from 2020. And I think that that's an important number to note because I know that COVID has delayed some people's business plans. So supporting businesses in Victoria County, oh, my notes disappeared, but uh, the Cape Breton Partnership dusted off the well-known Think Cape Breton First brand and launched Cape Breton First, an island-wide campaign to encourage Cape Bretoners to buy, eat, and stay local. Um, the decals can be seen in retail outlets, accommodations, and restaurants across Victoria County. Uh, while the image does show the winning businesses from North Sydney and Inverness, I included this because a lot of Victoria County businesses participated in this particular initiative during Small Business Week. Businesses were nominated on social media and then uh, they were drawn at random to see who was going to win. Uh, also, if you want to do the QR code, you can learn more about Cape Breton First on YouTube. So there are several programs here that are, that are here to help the businesses. I encourage you to just introduce me or forward me contact information from any businesses that are seeking assistance at any stage. Um, a few of them up here is the micro lending program, uh, the pop-up bistro, uh, the virtual advisor program, which is one-on-one -on -one support from an experienced business advisor. Also, I should mention the micro loan program is for female entrepreneurs. Um, and it just launched in December, so it's a great time to get on that one. Uh, COVID-19 support continues, and the Shop Here program was launched, uh, which gave 25 Cape Breton businesses the opportunity to launch an online store at no cost to them. And I'd like to mention that 
Entrepreneur CV website. It's a tremendous resource, uh, and I'm happy to forward that along to anyone that you, you think might be able to use it. Uh, in terms of attracting new business and investment, uh, the county, the community profile is available to prevent potential investors uh, on our website. And as newer statistics become available, we update this profile. Uh, these are just some of the partners we work with for promotion and projects. Uh, but in particular, there are several businesses in Victoria County that I've been connecting specifically with the Efficiency Nova Scotia program right now uh, to take advantage of the small business program. Uh, a few economic development projects to update you on. So the Strait of Canso Gateway Project. Uh, I know you're a little bit familiar with this one, but a group of municipal leaders from Inverness, Richmond, and the Port town of Port Hawkesbury came together in 2021 with the strong conviction that now is the opportune time for all Cape Breton municipalities and First Nations to collaborate on a project of significance for the entire island. So led by the REN team, the Strait of Canso Gateway Project Steering Committee was formed uh, consultations have taken place uh, and the warden took part in a facilitated meeting, uh, as well as the Cape Breton Regional Municipality participated as well. The Port Hastings Rotary is currently being reconfigured to a safer, more modern roundabout. Work has started and is, is slated to be completed this year. Uh, the goal of the Gateway Project would be to revitalize and transition the primary entrance to Cape Breton Island into something that is much more reflective of our world-class island and to build upon our strengths as an island together. Uh, I'm excited to announce the ACOA application has now been approved and the next steps are to hire a consultancy team uh, to prepare a multifaceted, multi-year plan and they're planning on issuing the RFP soon. In terms of housing studies, a big topic uh, on our plate right now, uh, the Cape Breton Partnership commissioned a study of the housing needs to support the growth and sustainability of seasonal industries in Cape Breton, more commonly known as the seasonal housing study, <laughs> in order to develop an understanding of the impacts of the lack of accommodations in the region and, what it's, and what's happening with various operators and industries. It identified the areas of need and greatest opportunity and looked at ways we could market any to any potential investors from the private sector. It's available on the partnership web, website and I've referenced it quite a bit. Uh, while an additional housing survey was completed for specifically Victoria County, uh, it didn't have a great response rate. And I think it's because it was so vast uh, that I really think that focusing on each of those individual ones as they come along is kind of more effective. So right now we're complementing those two studies with the housing and labor survey uh, in Inganish that launched last week. Uh, so we're focusing on a more specific area to start. Uh, lastly, more recently, the community, well, not more recently than last week, but just before Christmas, uh, the community consultation sessions were facilitated uh, by the partnership uh, for the uh, Victoria County Highland Civic Center. Um, and we provided the rink board with the final report. At this point in time, the next steps in terms of the Victoria, Victoria Highland Civic Center will come from the rink board. So we look forward to seeing what comes next. And lastly, while there's no photo here, I do wanna mention the Mountain Bike Tourism Action Plan. Uh, we're working really closely, the whole team uh, at Victoria County and, and myself, Dan and Lydia, and looking at ways to increase the momentum on this going into 2022. There are several people and businesses still interested uh, and somewhat beginning to develop in, in the county as well as business plans associated with those. We have such a diverse range of artists in Victoria County and I'm going to be honest, I'd love to work with them more. I've had the pleasure of meeting a few along the way, especially with the help of Councillor Longba, uh, but please encourage artists to reach out to us as well. Uh, a couple of initiatives recently, so in addition to the hospitality and tourism industry. The creative sector is one of the hardest hit sectors during COVID-19 and artists across the island have been seeking new ways to live and create. The Cape Breton Partnership joined together with leaders from Cape Breton Unamagi's creative sector to create jobs for artists. The Cape Breton Center for Craft and Design, the Cape Breton Music Industry Cooperative, Celtic Colors, the Gaelic College and the Highland Arts Theatre participated in the development of two project opportunities. The project supported 20 artists working in any creative discipline, and the artist that's featured on that image right there is from Big Brador. Uh, and also with the Cape Breton Partnership support, 16 creative sector organizations launched a video campaign to advocate for the importance of arts and culture during the global pandemic and its aftermath.
if you scan that PR, that QR code there, it will take you to YouTube and you can watch more. Uh, lastly, the Creative Economy Development Officer position is to be filled in the very near future. Lastly, before I turn this over to Kelly, uh, the Cape Breton Partnership is leading the development of a newly integrated Cape Breton Unamagi Economic and Population Growth Strategy to help our region work together to grow Cape Breton Unamagi. For the first time in Cape Breton's history, all municipal units and First Nation communities are coming together to support regional economic development initiatives through the REN model. The strategy will be released in 2022 and will be retooled to reflect current realities and new opportunities being presented post-COVID. This will include integration with strategies that are important to Victoria County, such as the tourism strategy and the mountain bike tourism action plan. Whew. There we go. Trying to stick within that time limit. Over to you, Kelly. <laughs> Perfect. Thanks, Erica. So my name is Kelly McKinnon, and I'm newly in the position of Labor Market and Immigration Advisor. Uh, we have a small team dedicated to human resources and immigration. I myself am a registered Canadian immigration consultant, which allows me to provide advice regarding immigration. So we guide employers through the complications of the immigration system and help to prevent and resolve issues when they arise. We provide immigration support to biotechnology startups and doctors who are relocating here. And we're also referral partners on several federal and provincial programming, including Mobilite Francophone, which can help grow our Francophone population. And I'll, brief, I'll briefly pass it over to Jessica McDonald to speak about our new HR services. Thanks, Kelly. Um, as Kelly said, I am Jessica McDonald. Um, also starting a new role of human resource advisor with the partnership. Currently, I'm a candidate working towards my CPHR designation. For those of you that don't know, that stands for the Chartered Professional in Human Resources, just like a CPA for accountants. Next slide, please. So HR services are sort of new in terms of being focused um, for the partnership. Our focus really in this new role will be to support employers in building their own strategic HR plan, which will include things like job analysis, job description development, and recruitment and retention. Um, we help employers find skilled talent domestically and or internationally through alignment with Employment and Social Development Canada's National Occupational Classification, otherwise known as the NOC, and the Canadian Occupational Projection System, COPS. Back to you, Kelly. Okay, so I'd like to focus a bit on the Atlantic Immigration Pilot, which has been both mine and Jessica's area of specialty for the past few years. So we've been a regional partner to the, develop, to, to the Department of Labor, Skills and Immigration, formerly NSOI, since 2017. Uh, the pilot program has now ended and a new permanent Atlantic Immigration Program launched in January. So there have been 15 total employers designated in Victoria County under the AIP, and we've supported 12 of those over the past few years. And I believe the municipality has actually been a designated employer themselves. So endorsements are files submitted by employers for a specific employee. Uh, since 2017, we've supported 28 endorsement files in Victoria County, and those employees brought with them 15 spouses and 15 children for a total of 58 new residents to your area. And over the past five years, we've supported over 500 endorsements island-wide. Uh, we can go to the next slide. Um, of those 500 endorsements, 64% were international graduates, which is huge for retaining the students in our area, and an additional 15% were workers in the area being retained by employers. So NFCC and CBU will continue to play an important role in attracting new temporary and permanent residents to the region, and these residents fill labor shortages, stimulate our economy, increase our population and its diversity. And the role of the Cape Breton Partnership is to support employers in retaining our current and new residents. So historically, we've been supporting them on the Atlantic Immigration Pilot and Nova Scotia Nominee Program, but we're able to expand our services going forward. We've also found a high demand for Cape Breton specific recruitment practices. So in August of 2020, we launched Cape Breton's only job board exclusively for Cape Breton employers and those seeking employment in Cape Breton. It was designed to match standards from the job bank, which is important for a lot of reasons, but especially for immigration. And we've actually recently deployed the third update, which includes the option to post board and volunteer opportunities in addition to employment. So far, 197 Cape Breton employers have signed up and posted over 515 jobs island-wide and 322 job seekers have signed up. So in addition to the part of our team that directly supports employers with immigration and HR practices, we've also got a whole team dedicated to settlement integration and inclusion, which again is huge for retaining newcomers in our area. So you can see some of the programming here, such as the Local Immigration Partnership and welcome to CapeBreton.ca. 
which is a great resource for newcomers and longtime residents alike. The QR code on this page will take you to Cape, welcome to Cape Breton, and you can learn more about some of these programs here. And the Cape Breton Welcome Network has a growing number of welcome groups and communities island-wide who come together to help welcome newcomers in those communities. And the Cape Breton Connector program is designed to connect new graduates, Canadian or international, returning Canadians or newcomers called connectees with leaders or connectors in their industry to help grow their networks. This can sometimes lead to employment, but the goal is to grow networks and help retain them in our communities. And I believe a number of the counselors with us today are actually involved with this as connectors. So as you can see, a part of our team helps get newcomers here and supports their employers with immigration and another part of the team makes Cape Breton a great place for them to stay in with. That's it for me. And that's a wrap. Do we have any questions? Well, thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, well done. And, and uh, we, I'm sure there are questions. And just because we are virtual, I uh, not put counselors on the spot, but uh, we'll probably go district to district for uh, there's a number of programs that you uh, outlined in your presentation. So probably start with district number one, Councillor McNeil, any questions or comments? Uh, thank you, uh, Warden. No questions, but uh, some comments. Uh, I want to thank Tyler and Erica and Jessica and Kelly for the presentation tonight and all the staff for the hard work that's been put in over the past number of years uh, in attracting business and workers and also working on housing and other aspects throughout the partnership. And um, I know uh, also I'd like to thank Shannon McNeil for all the hard work you did on a business plan for uh, Central Cape Breton Community Ventures in, in our district. So it's encouraging to see all the files that you have, Erica, and uh, all the uh, attraction of the new immigrants in, the, uh, in Cape Breton too. So very good work. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor McLeod, any questions or comments for any of the uh, panel this evening? Uh, okay, no, just a comment. Thank you so much for the presentation. Uh, as you know, I work very close with some of your um, programs. Uh, and just have a question for the APP program. Um, I hear um, was going to change some guidance about that. Do we have the so that people can still apply in or is a step back until the province gives some guidance? Do you know anything about that? Yeah, so it launched as of January 1st. So all um, designations under the pilot program expired on December 31st. So anyone who wants to be designated can now apply for that. Um, and once they're designated, which usually takes one to two months, um, they can apply for endorsements and okay. the, the federal government is accepting PR applications as of March 5th. So it is, it is open and, and employers are welcome to get started on that program. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you, Councillor McLeod. Um, perhaps we'll move into district number four, Councillor Longba. Uh, hi, I just wanted to thank all of you for your presentation and for all the hard work you do all the time. And uh, I just wondered if you had any updates on uh, from developed Nova Scotia on uh, cell service in this area. Uh, thank you, Council Longo, I can take that. Um, no updates as of yet, um, as, as um, our indication is developed Nova Scotia is definitely focused on the broadband. So while we bring that topic up often, I think uh, echoing what Victoria Council has said, vehemently on many occasions. Um, you know, their, their stance has been increased broadband will include the backhaul capability to improve uh, in, a, in, a, in a technical sense, but not, I guess, but on their focus. Um, our hope is that, um, uh, well, as we see their broadband project get nearer to completion, it would, uh, their attention would more, uh, hopefully through a, through direction from the provincial government would focus more on, on those broadband, um, or sorry, not broadband, but cellular uh, gaps in Victoria County and elsewhere. But so far, we have found a relationship with developed, uh, they, they've stuck true to their word. What they do have on their website is truly what the most recent um, updates are with the broadband. We've, uh, we've gone often to try to get better information, but, um, but feel like they are very diligent in putting that up. So I know that's not quite the answer that we all want, but I but I think that that uh, they are they are uh, definitely staying true to what what they said, and I 
I think there is some truth to it, though there's advocacy work to be done. And I, you know, we're happy to support Victoria County in that. Thanks a lot. Thank you. And I believe Councillor Patterson is with us via phone. I don't know if you can hear me, Fraser. If you can, if you I can hear questions. you, can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Any questions or comments? Hey, thank you. Thank you, Stephanie, for these uh, technical assistance too. Uh, I'd just like to uh, wish everyone a happy new year. Uh, you will have a new uh, leadership in place at the partnership, which would be a change for everyone, I guess, but we're looking forward to that. Uh, and finally, um, if you listen to some of the economists, uh, economists are like uh, TV lever, free leave readers or whatever. They have all different answers. But some of them are predicting that uh, once the COVID era ever declines or disappears, that economies are expected to come roaring back. So hopefully we can look forward to a, a, you know, a fairly bright future. And again, as others did, to thank you all for all of your work. Uh, it, it's making an impression, I think, in probably every community. So keep up the good work. And again, Happy New Year. Thank you for that, uh, Councillor Patterson. Appreciate your comments. Um, Deputy Warden. Yes, thank you, Warden. Uh, same thing. I just uh, want to thank everyone for the presentation. Excellent work. And no change than over the years. Things that only seem to be getting better with the K-River Partnership. So uh, thanks very much for all your work. Uh, I do want to mention to Erica, thanks very much for the housing uh, survey that started in Inganesh. Uh, I can tell you I've talked to a few people that have already completed the survey and they've been very impressed with the survey. Uh, usually surveys are long and cumbersome. Uh, they said this one is to the point. Uh, no uh, fooling around. And uh, they were very happy to get it. So uh, great word coming out of that. And uh, also hearing great things about just your communication with some of the businesses. So thanks very much, everybody, and very much to you, Erica. Thank you very much. Thank you, Deputy Warden. Uh, Councillor Oregon, Jackie, anything this evening? Oh, not, nothing too much. Uh, Erica, hopefully we can meet up, uh, <laughs> get get together in, the, in this new year, in the spring, maybe. Uh, thanks for the presentation and everything looks great and look forward to working with you. Thank you, Jackie. Appreciate those comments as well. Uh, finally, uh, Councilor McDonald, anything from District 8, please. Well, yes, thank you, Warden, and thank you, uh, ladies and gentlemen, for the presentation. Uh, a lot of great information there. And uh, I, as well, hopefully we'll get together with you, Eric, in the new year up in the beautiful District 8 up here. Uh, just a question I had looking during the presentation with regard to the job board. Is that What's the difference in relation to Victoria County too. Is it more industrial centers that are using, like the employers that are signing up looking for people or is it compared to Victoria County to Inverness County? And how would one go about accessing that information on that? So I don't have information on all of the counties, but I know there have been 515 positions posted and just under 30 of those were for Victoria County. So um, it's uh, it's not a huge percent, but it is it is growing right now and getting a lot of use. Great, thank you. That's it for me up here. I might I might add to that, uh, Councillor. The job board definitely is something we want to see grow on, and it's uh, less so about our our wanting this to be successful. Obviously, we want it to be successful and a good use of our resources, but really, it's to keep um, job postings local and to to make sure that we we do our best to make a match with local talent with local opportunity. Uh, too often we found the whole reason for launching this was we direct people to Indeed or we direct them to Career Beacon and they would, uh, you know, we, we don't begrudge people for pursuing uh, opportunities elsewhere. What we want to make sure our local opportunities are given a, 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 a pretty big spotlight and that's what this is all about. And I think uh, in the future, we're going to see uh, integration with this job board with, with individual uh, um, other organizations being able to use them as a database in the back end. Uh, and, and helping with the service that uh, Jessica mentioned on HR. So we see this as a multifaceted tool. It's been successful in just, just that very kind of narrow focus of getting 500 jobs out there. But really we see this as uh, the beginning of something else that uh, really brings in these other opportunities and ensures that we, we really leave no stone, stone unturned when it comes to connecting local talent with local opportunity. Great, thank you, Tyler. Thank you very much. And just to kind of wrap up, I just wondered just very quickly from my own perspective, uh, perhaps if you could elaborate a little bit more on the economic and population growth strategy, how, did, how do you see that rolling out and 
what uh, involvement do you see municipalities such as Victoria uh, per, partaking in that? Uh, absolutely, thank you for that, Warden. Um, uh, if you may recall, this is a long project. Uh, we had initially planned to have this uh, launched in the spring of 2020 uh, when we found ourselves uh, with a plan that uh, had to be thought uh, a lot differently about with, uh, with the onset of COVID-19. Um, so we've taken, so there's a lot of public consultation done in 2019 um, uh, with Group ATN uh, and a draft was, was come up. So all of that has not been thrown out, it's been reevaluated. Um, and so what we, we plan to take all of that, take um, a lot of the work we've done um, during that time and uh, making it more pertinent to our, to our local context. We feel uh, we've also been working closely um, with um, Eastern District Planning Commission and, uh, and the uh, Plan Nova folks with, um, to make sure that mm -hmm. those two efforts uh, coincide and, and, and support each other. And so uh, really we, we, don't, we feel like coming to council with that draft is, is our next step because uh, we're really not, um, we, at this juncture, there was such a large amount of public consultation done already and people are surveyed to death that we felt uh, the additional uh, benefit uh, would be negligible and really getting, getting a path forward out of the pandemic is more important. So that's been our, our plan. Um, likely uh, we will be sharing the, the final draft with our key stakeholders, including this council prior to public consumption, but, um, but really uh, we wanna make sure that we're not back to square one and wasting all that work that was completed. Great, uh, thank you for that. And I, I did check with Leanne. She doesn't have any questions or comments this evening. So just a couple of final points. I uh, certainly want to thank Erica for her work around the uh, Victoria Highland Civic Center. Well done. And um, I certainly can add uh, similar to similar comments that were made earlier that uh, as far as economic development and the role that we've had with the Cape Breton Partnership, it's been very positive. And uh, you and your interim role uh, Tyler, we look forward to working with you and with the partnership and each of the representatives that are here this evening. So it's been a very positive experience on our behalf as explained by several of our counselors this evening. So we look forward to uh, working with you as we move forward. And we'd like to thank you very much for your presentation this evening. Thank you, Warden. Great to be here. All right, and we'll see you again. Congrats on the new role, Tyler. Thank you, thank you. We look forward, we got a great team. Great. Thank you very much. And I'm going to let you go for this portion of uh, council. And uh, we're going to move on. We have another presentation this evening at council. And uh, it is from the Cape Breton Victoria Region uh, Center for Education. And I believe uh, Susan Kelly is presenting tonight. Uh, again, I'm just taking a look at my screen. Sorry. And uh, Susan, are you with us this evening? I see you down the corner there. Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? I can. And uh, so uh, welcome to Victoria County Council and Happy New Year from Council. Um, so if uh, yeah, I'm going to turn it over to you for uh, some comments, and then we'll open it up for some questions, concerns that have been referenced by our different counselors. So over to you, Susan, please. Thank you. Uh, Happy New Year, everyone. Um, the questions, we, I don't actually have a presentation tonight. Uh, we presented the last time we were there. And there were some questions came from you folks and uh, we worked on them today and sent you back um, what we have on them. So um, it was noted that most of the questions are around busing concerns. Some of them are around staffing. And um, I think that the staffing concerns have been around busing, certainly for first off the north of Smoky, we have been able to get um, two bus drivers north of Smoky, so we've filled the need there. Uh, and the deck, I think uh, we posted them and interviews are this week or soon. And so we expect that we will be able to fill um, also in the deck area and go back to the other schedule. So I know that was those were major concerns. Um, there are a couple of other concerns around staffing, uh, playground supervisor, uh, and um, substitutes for pre-primary. We certainly have had those on our own website. 
Um, we talked to schools and uh, community folk. We actually had two folk down looking when we did the bus driver one, they went business to business and employment center and posted posters. Um, I've just made a note about the Cape Breton partnership <laughs> and the job board. I wasn't aware of the Victoria County job board. So I've asked my folk if we've ever posted there and they weren't aware of it. So we certainly will with that. And we're more than happy to take um, suggestions from you folks. You have a website and certainly you can link to our website jobs at any point. Um, and I believe there's also, we've been made aware of, uh, Bay St. Lawrence has a community website as well, and we've made contact there. And um, our, when our new job postings come out, we will send whatever we have to them. So we're always looking. And if you folks have ideas, we're happy with your enthusiasm and happy to take your suggestions. It can be very frustrating from everyone's perspective when we can't find people for positions. So I guess that's the kind of big picture. Um, and I'll turn it back to you folks if you have other questions. Uh, thank you very much. I appreciate that, Susan. Um, I guess for, for those that may be joining us uh, virtually, they uh, probably are, are not aware of what some of the questions and what some of your responses are. So I just wonder just very quickly if uh, we go through the districts of, uh, of councillors that raise concerns with the uh, Regional uh, Centre for Education. So um, I want to go up north first to uh, Councillor McDonald. Did you have any, any questions or concerns or comments on the response that you received? Uh, yes, thank you, Warden, and thank you, uh, Susan. Uh, the only question I have was in regards to the, I think it was brought up prior to Christmas there in regard to the, the line of sight for, I think the school board is going to be sending something to the area. Is that correct? That you, you'd sent back in the, in the, the email. I just briefly, I had read it over and then in turn, are they going to be changing that stuff? So yeah, they, they have to go up and measure it. So they'll go up. Um, and Norman and measure it and um, see if it meets the, meets the appropriate distance for the line of sight. If it does, then they'll make application to transportation, uh, TIR, I think, and it says here, and I get all the, and I'll apologize for that, the different um, government groups um, involved. Um, I think it's TIR, is it? There anyway, so we but they're going up this week um, to measure the site and to assess it, and then if it needs to be moved, if it meets qualifications or the and they think they need to move it, they will make application through uh, Public Works. Sorry, there it is in my notes, Public Works. So they will go through Public Works to do that. Great, thank you. And just in, the last question I had was in regard to. Um, if there was mechanical failure of one of the buses up in our area, generally the, one of the gentlemen that has retired would always come out with the spare bus to uh, to uh, take care of those concerns. But now that he's retired, what's what's the plan? I guess basically, if there was a bus breakdown early morning, where would that mechanic be coming from, or is there going to be somebody hired for the north? Um, that, that's a, that's a question I didn't have on here, and I don't know the answer for. But that is something. I mean the 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 empty positions they are going to hire for. Um, this is north of Smoky, yes? That is correct, yeah. And, yes. I, and I apologize for that, Susan, because that oh, was- Oh, uh, that's okay. It's all right. Usually I have someone here with me who knows that the answer to that, but I will certainly check that piece um, and I'll get back to you specifically, or they'll get back to you specifically. How's that? Great, perfect. Thank you. That's it for up in uh, District 8 Warden. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Councillor, and uh, we'll drop down to District uh, Number Seven, please, Jackie. Hi, Susan. How are you? I'm good, Jackie. For some reason, my camera's not working. I apologize for that. I can't seem to get it to come on, so my apologies. <laughs> that's, that's no problem. I, I'm one of the ones that was worried about the the bus driver mechanic um, leaving and having a replacement for him. Right. Um, Susan, um, men mental health for the students. Um, since they've been online, have you been getting any reports of anxiety and is there any um, extra help or anything going to be done by the school board for these students? 
Um, I haven't heard anything in specific, Jackie. We know COVID is a stressor for everyone. Um, we do have a Zoom platform where guidance counselors and uh, mental health uh, clinicians can um, Zoom in to students. So if we hear from that from the school, from the counselor that's at the school, then certainly that's available and appropriate. The other thing, Jackie, is we have just, as you would be happy to hear, I'm sure, because you're a great advocate for down there, we have placed a Schools Plus um, clinician there. And uh, it, interesting how word of mouth goes, we were looking for a place for her to live. And she actually found it out through um, the church back home um, in the Caribbean. So someone there knew someone here and found a place for her. So we're really happy about that. Um, because we weren't sure we were able, going to be able to place her there because we couldn't find a place for her to live. Mm -hmm. And so Schools Plus, as you know, also deals with a lot of the mental health and those types of, of things. So, you know, if school's here, they should let us know. But we have our guidance counselors, we have our mental health, we have folk here that we can send down. And, and we also um, have, um, we just hired a new nurse as well. So, um, you know, there's, there's lots of supports. We just need to know from schools that they need extra. And how is the support services uh, such as uh, the speech pathologist, the read, I don't know what reading recovery is called anymore, oh, and, and all that working online? Um, uh, well, the read, it, it works quite well, I think, uh, especially with the one-on-one -on -one pieces. But of course, we only have one week online um, right now, and they're supposed to go back to um, one to in-person learning. Uh, so they kind of perfected it, I guess I'll say, or, or uh, but in the spring when they were online. And so it was much quicker to go back to the online piece. But I know the Zoom platform, the confidential Zoom platform worked very well in the spring. Um, at that time, it was Kathy Boudreau who was looking after it. We have other folks now um, who are looking after it. But to my knowledge, it worked really well, Jackie. But if you hear anything, please let us know. Um, I, I will. Know yeah. And is there any timeline on the cameras for the buses? Uh, yes, new, new, there, the plan is to add new ones in the new fiscal. So as you know, new budget happens in um, April. And so mm -hmm. there'll be a plan for, and the only other thing would be is if we had any extra money at the end of the year, you'll remember that Jackie is being yep. a phone number. Um, if there was money then that enabled us to purchase some with COVID, we don't know if there will be. Um, but certainly if there was, then um, we could put some money to cameras, yes. Uh, Councillor McDonald just asked a question that I'm going to ask for him is but the ventilation in all our schools it has it all been upgraded or so um, we have Middle River and I think Middle River might be the only is it the only Victoria County school that doesn't have active ventilation there are seven um, and I think Middle River is the only one and so they are they're coming tomorrow all the other regions got them today but they have HEPA filters. They're pretty impressive looking. I saw a picture of them online and they were ordered by the um, uh, Nova Scotia School Board Association used to be, now it's SS School Sport Nova Scotia or um, I got the wrong word for it again, but shared services basically. And so they'll be delivered on uh, tomorrow and they'll be installed this week and there'll be one in every room where there are people. So um, that's not a lot of rooms in, in uh, Middle River, but I think all of the other Victoria County schools have active ventilation. We have six other schools in Cape Breton County that don't. And so they'll be in those schools as well. So this week is, is when it's happening. Okay, thanks, Susan. Thank you, have a good evening. Thank you, Councilor Oregon. Uh, Deputy Warden Duff. Uh, yes, thank you, Warden. Um, thank you, Susan, for coming to Council once again. Uh, first of all, I want to say we did put a request in for a new sign at uh, Case Smoky Elementary, and uh, it has been erected, so the sign is in place. Thanks very much for that, and uh, the staff did a very nice job and did it quite quick, so thank you very much. Um, I, I guess one of the questions that I had was in regards to the uh, playground supervisor at Cape Smoky Elementary and the, uh, I guess, the subs for pre-primary. Um, I was glad to hear that you put out posters and stuff. I, I said, and I guess the reason I brought up that question, I did see the posters for bus drivers uh, throughout the community. And I'm very happy to hear that you were able to find a couple of uh, drivers because it's uh, quite tough right now to find anyone. 
but I'm wondering, you had mentioned that the posters were being put up also for the subs and for the uh, playground supervisor, whatever, at K. Smoky Elementary. Is that taking place? Yes, it will, um, as well as getting into some local sites. Uh, if you checked our website right now, there's none of those postings are on right now because we take them off the site and then up, like renew them and put new things up. And that's just in the process of happening since we've come back. And so we will do some posters at the same time because they were fairly successful the last time. So we, and again, if there are other things you're thinking about, please let us know. No, that, that'd be great. I think the posters did work and that does get it out into the community. Uh, you know, we're halfway through the year and the, these people have not been hired and I know it's tough, but uh, putting a lot of stress on the uh, the staff at the schools without these uh, positions being filled. But uh, I do appreciate all your work and uh, hopefully we'll see those posters in the near future. Thanks very much, Susan. Great, thank you. Thank you, Larry. Uh, perhaps we will uh, open it up to uh, Councillor Patterson if you're good to go. Uh, thank you, Warden. Uh, uh, hi, Susan. Hi. I'm just thinking here uh, how grateful I am that I don't have to go to school every morning since I've retired. Uh, you and all of the rest of the staff, the teaching staff, the painting staff, and so on down, I think all deserve a uh, great uh, thank you from, from the public. Uh, this, If you look at the situation next to the health system, I think the school system has probably uh, been impacted the most by the uh, the COVID uh, pandemic um, in a way of uncertainty, you know, and you can't blame the people that are making the decisions because they have to change those decisions to, based on the information they have. So one week there's going to be school and then the next week there's not going to be school. And uh, I think, uh, again, you know, keep up the good work. Uh, Keep the spirits up, and as I said earlier, uh, to the partnership people, hopefully we will see a decline and even possibly an end of the pandemic, and uh, we'll move on to uh, better days. Again, thanks, Susan. Thank you, Fraser. Thank you, Fraser. Um, Councillor Longva, any questions or comments? Uh, yes, uh, I'd like to thank Susan for for your taking time to come and uh, talk with us tonight. Um, I had uh, an issue last time when you attended uh, in person in Bedeck um, with a young couple that bought property um, in this area. It's a, it's a business and they're gonna add on to that business. It's a great thing. It's uh, they're into mountain biking, but they also have a and b and uh, they have a young son who's in grade primary and from Rekhov to Bedeck, which is where the students from this area usually go. My children went there, but it's an hour and a half one way for a six-year-old child. And there's hardly any other children in this area either. So he'd basically be on a bus for an hour, three hours a day if he were to go to Bedeck. So they did uh, managed to enroll him in the Inganish school, but there is no busing to that area. So they have been driving him, but there's a bus stop that's quite close to their home that saves them a lot of time in their day if they are able to drop that child, their child off at this bus stop with other children going to the same school. And they had, they had uh, called, got in touch with the school board themselves and they were not satisfied with the response and that's why they brought it to me to bring to council and since I brought it to council they've heard nothing so we did receive a letter back to council that was sent by the CAO uh, with these concerns in it and the answer was that those people had been contacted but they haven't been contacted and uh, nothing has changed uh, I mean fortunately there's no school right now so they're not having to deal with it right now but I don't see what the issue is, why they can't put, like drive their child to get on the bus there and pick him up at that location instead of having to drive the extra amount to get, go all the way to the school is their issue. So I just wonder if, if that's something that you could uh, take to the people that can look after that and do something for them because I mean, they, they made the choice to move out here and. And it's awesome for us to have young people, families moving into the area and starting businesses is a, a wonderful thing. And I hope that we can accommodate them with their child. 
And I certainly, well, we did talk about that. And um, my understanding and the understand, Lewis's understanding was that they had spoken with them and that they had found a solution. So there's, there's communication is in and it sometimes gets confused. So I, I do believe there was a contact made, but um, I will go back and um, have another contact be made. We'll double check and see what happened with that. And I will make sure that they also let you know, Barb, that that contact has been made. Awesome. Thank you very much, Susan. Okay, no problem. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we will go to district number two. Councillor McLeod, any questions or concerns you want to bring yeah. up this evening? Thank you, Warren. Thank you, Susan, for, for today. Uh, Happy New Year. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think maybe you have um, some um, background about this. Uh, it's just I want to check. I didn't catch when you say about the Academy. Do okay. you have the interviews are done or just making the interviews? So they're interviewing this week, that is my understanding. The job postings went out and I think they closed maybe yesterday or today, but I think the interviews are this week or next week. They're coming up very soon. Okay, so with that uh, said, um, when, you, uh, when you get uh, the, the, bus, uh, the bus drivers uh, ready, that will be um, the result of the busing in the dirt uh, roads in the DEC Academy. So it will we'll go back to back, uh, our five buses will be back again? Yes. With your spare buses, when you, uh, the buses are ready, the bus drivers are ready? That's my understanding. They're going to hire folks that they've lost and go back to what we had prior to having to, sh we had to put four buses in and change a little bit there because we didn't have a driver. So when I spoke with them, they're going back to where we were. I okay. understand your child has to walk quite a distance. It's, yeah, the what, sorry? I, I think your child has to walk quite a distance to accommodate the new buses, is that true? Well, they're, they're uh, yeah, they have two dead roads and they're like, uh, they say there's 0.8 kilometers, point, point 0.8, they have to uh, walk to the, main uh, uh, road right now, but they, um, I just want to assure, if you can assure me, oh, oh will we get back our buses back, like our five buses, uh, when you have our spare drivers higher? Because yes. we don't want, yes? Yes, and I think it's clear there. Now they're, if, if they were getting busing before we lost the driver, then they will get busing when we get the driver back. Okay. Yes. Is that, okay. is that clear? Yeah, that is. Yeah. Once you have, once we have our spare drivers uh, back, you we get our five buses uh, with our routes back originally in 2021, 22. Right. Okay. And then my second is uh, we have that uh, uh, conversation last time about the payment for our garage and the, uh, some uh, have to fix some. Um, and what is the garage in Bedeck Academy is full of potholes. And so wonder if you have the tender done or there's just going to be. So I asked uh, them about that and they said that was done. It was fixed. The one that, it was the bus garage, yes? Yeah, no, yeah. I didn't. I they told say this was fixed. Yep. Okay, I will check that later okay. when. Yeah, let it. me know for sure. Okay. You all have my email address and I'll double check. But when I asked that, they said, no, that had been fixed. Okay. Just to check, uh, it's just uh, about the first comment. So right now the bosses uh, have the two dirt roads. Uh, the people, the kids are walking to the main door. I have on Hillcrest Drive, uh, three families on their grade five. Uh, they're walking. Uh, is there any chance that they couldn't just, you know, pick them up? It's only take five minutes up and down to go to, but it's the last route they will do uh, to get to the school. If you so just for, check I, it out with that. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I can't change routes that weren't there before, but um, when we lost a bus driver at this point, um, they're sticking with the provincial policy. But if they were being picked up prior to us lost, losing the driver and having to go from five to four buses, then they will get picked up once we get, assuming we will, get the, the fifth driver again. Okay. 
So right now they can't. Okay. Okay, sounds good. Okay. And uh, yeah, and just just uh, uh, just to when they take these decisions, you can pass it on. It's not about numbers. What we have, we have a distance. B uh, Victoria County is so big and geographical, and you know sometimes uh, there's a there's a no. Is the bus is not full, but it's a lot of kids that live in long distance. So just keeping that in mind for us. Sure. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Councillor. And uh, finally, Councillor McNeil, District Number One. Yes, thank you, Board, and thank you, Susan, and Happy New Year. Uh, no, I do have a, a few questions on the policy. Uh, it seems like it's easy for the provincial government to change the policy, but it's not to. But there's no coordination with municipalities. Uh, we're not told about anything, and it, it's given to parents. Uh, at a letter probably a week before school starts and uh, and there's no way of uh, 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 having their complaints to the center and uh, again with uh, I know MLAT Spain knows about situations too and, and hopefully he will uh, have uh, the department look at policy again there but uh, it, Rural areas are different than, than urban areas. Uh, like, there's no shoulders on the road here. Last year in, in my district, there wasn't any uh, uh, mowing or cutting on the shoulders of the road. Kids, it's dangerous for kids to be walking on the road. And again, with the policies uh, for uh, rural roads, like for a J class road and I class road, there's no difference in some areas. And uh, to, to have a bus taken away from an I-class road, which is probably in just as good a shape as a, as a J-class road, it doesn't make sense to, uh, to me. And uh, these policies have to be looked at again. It's okay to change a policy uh, one way, but then we can't look at it to change it back. It doesn't make sense. And I'm not provincial government, as you know, so. <laughs> um, no, that's, I know that, but, but the center has to, has to have to make change uh, for rural areas. And, and that's what I, I'm, I'm bringing up too. Like there's no, there's no other, there's no school board now for people to agree to. So, like these, these things have to be brought up to provincial government. And, and the things aren't working. So, yeah. I hear you. You're coming in and out a little bit, but um, that would be the broadband issue, maybe, yeah. <laughs> um, which you're okay. aware of as well. But um, uh, yeah, I, I appreciate. I grew up in, I live in a rural area, and I grew up in a rural area. You all know my story. My dad's from Victoria County. So, you know, I, I, I'm, I understand. But it seems to be all like the last few years seems to be like policy change for less busing uh, and uh, that has to be looked at like after the last meeting it was simple courtesy busing they tried to look at courtesy busing for, for everybody like everybody that wanted it I got a phone call a week after that meeting saying that courtesy busing was refused to a family in George's River for uh, a student to transfer to Iowa and uh, well, like they, they had to go to grievance, I think twice. So like, I don't know where, where the courtesy busing is being supplied. So. Courtesy busing comes out of our budget. If courtesy busing happens, if there's room on a bus, and in that particular case, I'm not absolutely positive about. Um, and, um, but if there's room on a bus and the bus is going by, usually, Usually we will pick the child up, but sometimes there looks like there's room on the bus because there isn't someone there, but actually the seat has someone's name on it. So I, I don't know that particular situation, but again, um, that's a situation that if you send to us, we could have a look at and respond back to you about that particular situation. Because so I do know there was one situation there like that, where yeah. although the bus looked like it had room, there was no spare seats. Yeah. So, yeah. you know. 
Well, yeah, that may have been it. That may have been it. And and when you look at the bus, it looks like it's not full because someone's not there. So those are tough situations for sure. And you know, we appreciate you advocating on behalf of students. I mean, we are all about students, um, and so we work closely with parents and folks to try to do as much as we can. Unfortunately, we can't do it all, but we do what we can. So you know. But since the like the since the school board was disbanded. We seem the councilors seem to be getting complaints about what's going on. So yeah, and I understand that. Yeah, right. Because the elected officials now are you, and not the elected school board. Probably, I'm guessing, right? But that's the that's the piece. Yeah, and I hope people are also telling you that you're doing a good job too, because that's sometimes it's difficult when all you hear are the negative things. There's lots of great things happening as well. And you folks do lots of advocating and it's important that people say that because you folks spend a lot of time um, looking at these concerns, right? So I, I appreciate that as well. And I have spoken with Keith Bain on some of these situations as well. And I, you know, I, I understand, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And I, I appreciate that too. And uh, I've spoken with uh, MLA Bain too. Mm -hmm. Hopefully he'll, he'll uh, bring our concerns to the Department of Education too. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor McNeil and uh, Susan. If you don't mind, we have uh, MLA Bain uh, on this evening, and he has his hand up. So I guess he has a question or a comment. So Keith, I'll turn it over to you for a question for Susan. Yeah. Thanks very much, Warden. I hope you can hear me okay. You can. I think it's important to know that the uh, the board or the education center, as it's called today, have to, they're dealt the cards they're given and they have to follow the provincial guidelines, of course. So I think it's up to us as MLAs to ensure that the policy is changed so that it does suit the more rural areas in our, in our municipality and indeed throughout the province. And that's one thing that I have on the agenda, I've already spoken to Minister Drone about it, or Druin, and uh, it's something that we're talking about because it, it definitely has to be looked at. Uh, again, when a decision is made for a busing situation and the decision is made in Halifax, there's a lot of people being left out. So that that's where we, uh, that's where I stand at this point. And, Although Susan and her staff take a lot of, uh, have a lot of remorse over all the phone calls they get, they're, they're dealt with the cards they're given and they have to enforce the policy and we respect that. Just one other thing too, Warden, if I can. And sure. For Oregon mentioned it was about uh, mental health for students and especially with what's going on with COVID and everything else, we know that it's played a, a big role in the lives of everybody, parents, uh, students, and everybody else. But I think it's important to, for council to know that our Minister of uh, Mental Health and Addictions is also a Cape Breton who lives in a, in a rural area. And I know that, that the Minister Culver has offered his services to listen to people and to bring forward any concerns they might have. So I think it's important that the council knows that, that the board under Susan knows it as well. And hopefully we can look after some of these problems before they become too immense. So anyway, I'm gonna stay on here now, and listen to the rest of it. Uh, I've truly enjoyed this. And again, uh, Susan, my, <laughs> I feel your pain. I'll put it that way. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you, Keith. Always a pleasure. Um, always a respectful conversation with you, and I appreciate that. We do what we can. And interestingly enough, I was on the call with um, uh, Minister Comer just a couple of days ago. And, uh, you know, Schools Plus was, was raised and, and the work that they do and the need for more supports. And so um, we work closely with them. So um, as well, so so thank you for that. And I know he's very concerned as well. So these are all pieces that we're all involved with, with our kids. And, um, you know, kid, kids are, are important to our future. So thank you. Thank you. And 
we're going to wrap it up here with the with their discussion with the school board. Um, Susan, I didn't add anything to your list. We have an issue that we're dealing with here at Deck Academy. It's uh, it's well in hand, so I, I we're just going to let it uh, solve itself over the next month or so with the Department of Transportation and Public Works. So anyway, that's ongoing, and we don't have to have that discussion tonight unless uh, um, something happen doesn't happen in the next four or five weeks, and we'll follow up with you. But uh, just want to thank you very much for, again, uh, joining us at council tonight. Uh, and uh, I can assure you that um, clearly this is the type of dialogue we'd like to have. Um, a number of questions were brought up by councillors over the last couple of months in regards to uh, school board issues. And uh, it's nice that we get to speak to you directly and get voice those concerns directly to you. Um, it doesn't always have to be a presentation. It's just more around communication for the most part. So uh, we look forward to perhaps having a chat with you again uh, later on in the spring and see if some of not all of the issues that we've discussed with you tonight have been resolved or, or at least on the way to being resolved. And some of them we do know that are, are responsibilities that fall outside your jurisdiction as well. So I do want to thank you uh, again for attending council and we look forward to uh, meeting and having a conversation with you in the spring. Thank you, Bruce. Anytime. All right. Appreciate it. Appreciate your time. So thanks. we're going to take, um, thanks. Um, uh, it is 614. We're going to take a 10 minute break and we will reconvene at 624, 625. Thank you. And we'll see you after the break.
All right, are we ready to uh, convene? We convene. All right, the next item on our agenda this evening is uh, the minutes from our meeting of December 15th, 2021. Those minutes were circulated to you. You've had a chance to review them. Are there any errors or omissions in those minutes? No corrections. So can we have a motion to accept the minutes as circulated? I make a motion to uh, accept the minutes as circulated. Thank you, Councillor Longa. Do we have a seconder, please? Uh, Jackie Organ, Councillor, has seconded. All in favor? Contrary minded, motion is carried. Thank you very much. I'm just going to turn it over to Leanne for any old business uh, arising from those minutes of December 15th. Please proceed. Yeah, I didn't have a whole lot of old business arising out of those minutes. Um, there was a request for the school board of council to update, get updated on issues, which we just dealt with. And there was also some updates one in from Public Works, which we had the meeting with the Department of Public Works in December prior to our last meeting. Thank you, Leanne. And, um, and all letters have been sent out Omar. that were requested. Well, she just okay. called. I can't. Thank you, Fraser. Good. You're on mute now. Um, does anybody have any questions or comments in regards to old business from December 15th? Fraser, you might want to go on mute. Okay, you're back on mute. Thanks. Um, all right, uh, business arises again. I'll turn it back to Leanne for a moment. Yeah, so I, I think we're going to new business or my report. Okay, so we dealt with old business and business arising. So you're yes. good with both. Yep. There's nobody else that has any business arising. Okay, good. Now we'll go on to new business and your CAO's report, please go ahead. Great, yeah, thanks. Um, I, I did have one other thing that uh, was not added on here uh, since this went out today, but I was speaking with Lester Tingley related to the Inganish subdivision. And he has informed me that um, he's concerned with going down there on the property that we have at this time because of the snow on the ground. And um, the property is not exactly as we had pictured it or as we had thought. Um, he said there's jets and crevices and look, it's not as, it's not a cut and dry straight piece of property. Uh, so he has more work to do on that. Uh, he's going to send me an update this week on, um, something that he thinks we need. A, a, he said the North piece is better than the South piece and we probably need a title search on it. So he's going to be sending me a bit of a drawing on it or what he has to date, uh, but our, we're not gonna have the complete survey done on it for a bit. Uh, so just wanted to let you know on that. Um, now related to new business or my report, I just wanted to give you some updates related to different departments within the municipality. So in recreation and active living, there are three guided hikes that are scheduled with Hike Nova Scotia that we have partnered with. Uh, the first one is happening at Cape Smoky, and that is, I believe, on Friday, and that one has actually reached its max. We're following all pro, uh, COVID protocols related to these, and there will be 25 people that will be uh, invited, or sorry, will be allowed uh, to walk with these. So uh, on the other two, I believe that it's Bell Bay and um, I'm not certain of where the other one is. Keep checking our website and Facebook posts. Uh, North Islands Nordic. Okay. And uh, so if you want to be involved in them, please uh, get in there early because they seem to be uh, going really well and wanting people seem to want to take part. So to get signed up, uh, please sign up early. Uh, Lydia is also finishing up a grant proposal for the garden beds in behind the uh, the courthouse, the garden beds, the wood is rotting on them. So we're looking to see if we can get a grant to update those. 
um, sending that proposal in. Uh, she's also putting together a reminder for schools and rinks for the grant application and for getting their grant money. So if you're in contact, uh, I know that we were talking about the deck rink earlier, but the rest of the rinks that we have, um, make sure that anyone on the rink committees knows that they need to get some information to Lydia to get the grant funding or the rink funding that is available and the school's funding. Uh, she has also ordered uh, bear proof garbage cans for down in Dingwall for the placemaking site, which we're going to talk about in a little bit. But um, these garbage cans are on their way and will be put down at the Dingwall placemaking site. Um, and any training that is going on, um, if there was going to be the babysitting course or any uh, training that could be going on through the uh, recreation department, that's all put on hold for the next bit for the time being related to our COVID restrictions that are in place. Uh, in our economic development department, we just had an update from the partnership, so I won't go into her information. It's basically the same information that she talked about tonight. Tourism in Dan's department. So there is a winter market readiness assessment that's in partnership with Destination Cape Breton and Inverness County. The consultant has been selected for that. Um, and there will be meetings held shortly related to getting our tourism operators up and running for the winter season to handle the influx of hopefully the tourism, our four season tourism. There's also going to be a meeting on festival and event funding coming up. So if you have any not-for-profits that are planning on doing any festival festivals or events, get them to keep their eyes open because there will be um, some money hopefully available for that. Uh, and the information coming up soon. ACOA Tourism Recovery Funding had a bit of a glitch in it with a previous application that just went out. So the glitch has been fixed and applicants are being asked to submit again. So if you are uh, an organization that has applied for some tourism recovery funding, get in touch with Dan if you need some more information or if it doesn't seem to be working because there was some uh, folks who were having a bit of a problem on that and rightfully so because it came from the province, the, the glitch, but it has been fixed. Uh, Cape Smoky opened the full hill, full hill yesterday for the first time. Uh, congrats to Martin and the team for the start of the new chapter for winter in Victoria County. Uh, North Highlands Nordic also opened this weekend with a repaired groomer, groomer and new addition to their building supported by you folks and by the county. So congratulations to both of those and uh, wish them a successful winter season. Uh, I'm not sure if all of you know, but Cape Breton Island was just named one of the best destinations to visit in 2022 by CNN Travel. This is a huge accolade from a popular and reputable travel publication, and I believe it's the first time that we've been uh, recognized for that. So we need to be ready when they start to show up in the winter season um, and, the, and the summer season as well. Uh, we want to congratulate former Celtic Colors Executive Director Mike McSween. Uh, he's recently accepted a position uh, with Nova Scotia Department of Communities, Culture, Tourism and Heritage, and will be leaving uh, Celtic Colors. So wanna wish him congratulations on his new role and uh, appreciation for all the work that he's done with Celtic Colors. In community development, again, as I mentioned in Lydia's department, um, there, there's Dingwall placemaking fund money that we have received from ACOA, so we have um, we've been approved for a project down in Dingwall uh, and we, we're creating a space down there. Norman's known about it for a little bit. Uh, we should see things start to ramp up there, uh, hopefully in the spring, but there's been a little bit of work down there so far. Um, Dan is also going to be having some meetings with Leanne Jennings at Develop Nova Scotia regarding uh, planning of a potential community master planning for projects in Bedeck and in Ganesh as well. Some work on trails, uh, the area review or the archaeological resource impact assessment um, for the trails department, which was a bit of a hold up in the past on getting the archaeological review done. Uh, a consultant has been hired, uh, going to start working on the trail route um, in the very near future. So um, we are making progress on that. We've also continued to work on two sections of the trail 
uh, development. Not sure if anybody has been out to the transfer station in Bedeck, but um, behind our facility there or in front of it, there's a parking lot being built. And that is part of the next phase that's being worked on. Um, at our last council session, we did some emergency repair funding for three different groups for uh, properties or, or sections of trails that needed some work that was um, damaged heavily during the November storm. Uh, just want to let you know that uh, three groups have been given up to $50,000 to complete the work. Two of those are already uh, completed or are very close to completed. So Kravis Mountain Club uh, completed several sections that had been um, damaged. Cabot Club has also completed uh, large sections that have been um, damaged. And St. Anne's Club is having a bit of a problem on that one because of the rope remoteness of the area that was damaged, but they're hoping to have the, or we're hoping and they're hoping to have the work completed by the end of January. Um, and then also to let you know, there was a Snowmobile Association of Nova Scotia uh, survey that was done and just in uh, partnership with Destination Cape Breton. And it was completed regarding trails in Cape Breton. And some of the results that came out reinforced what we're doing on the trails. Um, a lot of them are talking about parking lots that are needed so that they're not parking on the side of the road and signage. So um, it reinforces the, the direction that we're taking in our phased approaches and what we're working on and where we're spending our money. So that's really good to hear that uh, the snowmobilers are looking for the same thing that we seem to be putting in place. Uh, in our public works department, uh, depot applications for uh, not-for-profit groups to be uh, receiving some funding for uh, bottles or refundables that come in. Those applications are open for both North and South at this time. Uh, if you know of a not-for-profit group that uh, would like to have their name in there, please have them uh, follow the application or put an application in. It's on our website right now. Uh, it's an easy way to get some, uh, get some funding for them. And there's, I think, 10 groups so far that have put their their names in so far. So that's great to hear. Also, we are looking to partner up with Divert Nova Scotia for a Recollect app. It's an app that can go on your phone that can keep you up to date on our waste management for our waste wizard, what goes in each different type of bag, um, days that collections are doubled up. Um, it's easy, it's an app for your phone. Uh, so this information, we're going to try and get the word out on that um, as best we can with all the different sources that we have available right now. And we're still working on our quote for our generators for all of our uh, water utilities. Um, so that's something we're, hope well, we're hoping to have that money spent and generators in, generators in place by the end of March. Uh, in our senior safety department, um, She's been talking about being very concerned for say for our seniors during these latest restrictions and thinks this might be one of our hardest years for our seniors in the area. Um, so looking for some innovative ideas or ways to get them uh, connected or um, keeping lines of communication open with our seniors. Um, related to that, our seniors lunches have been canceled, or, or the, the group in St. Anne's has canceled their seniors lunches. So we're trying to see if there's a way to get those up and running virtually. So seniors can um, learn something as they're having a little bit of a, uh, a lunch. She's also partnering with a pen pal program in Cumberland County. And currently it could be to match up a senior in Victoria County with a senior in Cumberland County, but uh, we may see if we can open that up. There may be some people outside of seniors who are looking to have a pen pal as well. Uh, so there'll be some more information coming out on that. She's also finalizing her Rick Hansen accessibility training and moving forward with that. Uh, she's saying she hasn't heard much on snow plowing issues. That was one thing that was going to, we thought was going to be an issue with seniors. Uh, over the winter about getting their driveways plowed. Uh, hasn't been hearing a whole lot related to snow plowing. So fingers crossed that that issue has solved itself. Um, 
because she's thinking she would be hearing about it if it was still a concern. So we're we're hoping that that issue has has figured itself out. There's lots of questions coming in on the Nova Scotia Senior Care Grant uh, that is available for funding snow plowing and helping around seniors' homes. Uh, so she has that information. And uh, one thing that she's hoping that all counselors will be able to help spread the word on is the fair assistance program related to Victoria County Transit. The fair assistance program is open to seniors, but to others also who are in need of help with, uh, with their fares on the transit. All you have to do is self-identify that you need help with having your, uh, your fare paid for, and the driver should be able to accept that. Uh, there's some brochures that are made up. Um, there's information available on our website, uh, but we're hoping that counselors will be able to spread that good news that uh, if somebody is looking to get somewhere and they don't think that they can afford getting on the transit, uh, there is help available for them. So uh, actually, Councillor McNeil was in today and took a brochure. Uh, so there's brochures at the office, and if there's a way that we can get them to you, uh, please let us know and we will arrange to get them out to each of the different locations. Um, just a couple of other things uh, related to washroom funding or the washroom project that we've been working on. So we received three applicants, or sorry, six applications in total. Five of them were from uh, North of Smoky. One was from Bedec. Uh, we're, we sent word out today or sent letters out related to three of those projects um, that were hoped that are spaced out as well as we can. Um, and we're hoping to get those done by the end of May, hopefully. And so we're hoping that we're setting up some uh, great partnerships with uh, some worthy applicants that came in. Um, the RFP closed for our legal services. So we're in the process of doing our evaluations related to that. And hopefully by next council, we'll be able to uh, let you know and maybe uh, introduce you to uh, our our legal services or legal team that uh, should be in place by then. And then one other thing, um, Bruce might be wanting to talk about it, but uh, we've been approached by Destination Cape Breton related to Canada Games. So I'll let him speak in his probably in district concerns, um, but we have received uh, some interest or um, Destination Cape Breton is interested in sending out a proposal for Canada Games um, in our area. Could be great exposure for all the snow destinations that we have. Um, and we'll be needing council's approval related to something like that, putting the bid in. So that's that's what I have related to my CAO report. So thank you for that, Leanne, and, and just <clears throat> Wondering if I just comment at the end very quickly about uh, the request for the Special Olympics bid, but does anybody have any questions or, or comments for Leanne in regards to her report this evening? <clears throat> Excuse me. We are good. Uh, I just want to reference the uh, request uh, to partner on bid for 2024 Special Olympics. Um, no, I no, no, it's, it's not Special Olympics, it's Canada Games. I don't believe it's Special Olympics. Yeah, Special Olympics. Okay, sorry. I don't have it. Yeah, no, I have the, uh, have the request here, sorry. Um, so I, I did send it around to all counselors just to, so they have a chance to review the, do, uh, the, the request. Um, and uh, there is a, uh, a deadline, I think the end of January, we have to express whether we're interested or not. So rather than uh, deal with this under a uh, district concern, it is a county initiative, I guess. So I think now would be the most appropriate time. Uh, Leanne referenced it and uh, I'd just like to see what council's interest in whether or not we wish to proceed. It's an expression of interest. It's not that we will be, uh, uh, at this point, they'll be evaluated to uh, Cape Breton and others. Um, as a co-host, municipality uh, Victoria would be required to make a financial commitment as part of this bid 
that is in the range of fifty to seventy thousand dollars. Financial commitment would only be required if the bid is successful. So I guess what I'm asking, Council, are we interested in uh, sharing on this bid? And uh, if so, we would need a uh, motion to, to uh, let Destination Cape Breton know that uh, we are an interested uh, partner. Yeah, we're not 100% in favor of doing this. I'll wait till the rest of council decides, but uh, if everybody else in favor, I have no problem making that motion. Yeah, um, do we have a seconder? And then we'll, we'll open it yes, for discussion. Second. second by Councillor McLeod. So all are in favor of uh, having the discussion. Um, so any questions or comments? We'll start with Councillor Longwood first and then Councillor McDonald. So Barb, go ahead, please. Um, yeah, I'm in full favor of that. I think it's a wonderful thing to have the Special Olympics happening in Cape Breton. Yeah, great. Thank you. Uh, Councilor McDonald? Uh, yes, thank you, Warden. Uh, just to, uh, is it, the, was it for winter or summer? The, it's the 2024 Special Olympics Canada Winter Games in 2024. Perfect. And the only question I had was, is is this going to be just on a provincial level? Like, are there other municipalities that could possibly bid to have it in their areas? I think it's open across Canada. Great. I think it's a fantastic idea. I think Victoria County would be the most fitting place to, to have it. Thank you. Yeah, and, and uh, that's a good point. Uh, Councilor McDonald, it is the Canada Winter Games Special Olympics. And um, <clears throat> so right now we're in the early stages. Uh, it's yep. just sort of an expression of interest to see if yep. we are interested in, in taking part in this bid proposal. Yep. And we would only have to contribute the amount at the time that the bid is uh, was successful. Anybody have any, any, any other questions or comments in regards to the request to partner on the bid for the 2024 Special Olympics Canada Winter Games? Councilor McNeil. Yeah, no, I, I'm in total favor of it too. I think it'll be a, a great showcase for the county. Yeah. And hopefully some local athletes will be in it too. Yes, exactly. The Nova Scotia athletes and hopefully some from our, our local area as well. Anybody else final? So then uh, we will uh, ask CAO to contact uh, Terry Smith and express uh, Victoria County's interest in uh, being a co-host for the 2024 Special Olympics Games, Special Winter Games. Winter Games. Uh, you might just want to finish that. I think you have a motion and a seconder. Yeah, all in favor? Uh, any opposed? So it was passed unanimously and well supported by our municipality and our council. Great. Great. Thank you. And thanks for the lead into that, Leanne. Um, so if there's no other questions or comments for Leanne in regards to a report, we're going on to you covered new business, or did you have anything else that you wanted to bring up, Leanne? Nope. We're down into the taxation update. Okay. And you're going to provide that? Yep. Go ahead, please. Okay, so um, as of today, we have 1.278 million outstanding compared to 1.7 million this time last year. So we're ahead by about $429,000 year over year. Uh, of that number, the current outstanding is ahead by 139,000. So we have 777 in current compared to 916 the year before. Uh, our arrears is sitting at 501,000 compared to 790 the year before. So we're about 290,000 better in our arrears as well. Uh, since our last council session of December 15th, we've collected about $135,000. So staff are working very hard um, kudos to all the ones in the, all our staff in the, um, in that department, um, making real progress in this area. 
Great, thank you very much. Any questions or comments in relation to the taxation report that is presented this evening? Very good, we're gonna turn now to Department of Public Works Concerns. We'll start with district number one, please. Thank you, Warden. Uh, yeah, uh, there's a few items I have here. Uh, I've been working with MLA Keith Bain and uh, Steve McDonald on these issues. Uh, there's a pothole um, on the turn at Hector's Point. It's a recurring pothole. They, they patched it last year. It's back just prior to uh, the snow. And uh, it has to be dealt with ASAP. Cars are swerving to the opposite side of the road on that dangerous turn. So uh, they're going to look into it. Also, speed signs. Uh, this is um, this request has been made in the past. Speed signs and uh, pothole issues at uh, the post office. I uh, know MLA Keith Bain uh, knows about this situation, also, and uh, he's looking into it uh, with Steve uh, McDonald. And uh, I want to thank the plow and grader operators uh, for the work in the past uh, couple of storms. Uh, I know I did make a complaint the last storm. I made a mistake. Uh, the plow, the plows were out, and but I didn't see them out. And I, I just want to make uh, sure that they know and appreciate the the work that uh, that they're doing is is uh, looked at. And uh, also the the it seems to have gotten better in the last two or three years since uh, it came back to Victoria County. So. Good work to the plow and uh, greater operators. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, District number two, any public uh, works concerns? Uh, thank you, Warren. Uh, just uh, just to put in the minutes, uh, uh, Kilbane uh, knows and Steve McDonald knows about this. We are in in the process of to fix it up. Um, just about Zion Road uh, is um, they have. In the river, going um, there's some beavers, uh, so it's a dam and it's a brook, so everything is floating. So uh, we they're they're checking right now uh, what is the best approach to fix it. But just want to make a um, put it in the minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor, and uh, it is duly noted. Um, District number four, Councillor Long, anything public works wise tonight? Uh, yes, I did send uh, this all of these to Steve, but I'd like to just read them off because uh, so they're in the minutes. Sure. Um, I had I had a request from a constituent on the Meadow Road about moving a culvert that is causing flooding on her property. The, the culverts on the Meadow Road, apparently, they get complaints about this because that tends to happen. Culverts. Uh, tend to run off in any property. So Steve is going to, said that he would go and discuss the options with uh, this constituent. Um, also, I asked him again about the bridge below John Montgomery's on the Meadow Road. It is quite dangerous. Uh, there's no guardrail on it. And he said, well, it's actually a boxed culvert and that they are going to put a rail on it. Uh, they were gonna put it on this week after the snow that we had. Um, we also had, uh, I had some complaints of the major flooding that was going on on the Hamilton Road Then apparently it was caused by a beaver dam. They removed the beaver and they repaired the road. Um, and I asked them what the plan is for the bridge that's out on the West Harbor Road because uh, the Oregon Road and the um, Tarbot Vale Road were getting lots of attention because they had no bridge and people stranded. They still have no bridges out there. They are in the works, but because Christmas and holidays um, and the weather, I guess it's been delaying that, but hopefully in the next week that they'll be actually able to drive out for the first time since uh, that damage was done. And Stephen said that uh, the bridge on the West Harbor Road, because it's not leaving anyone stranded, is going to be slated to be replaced in the spring. And last but not least, uh, the Big Hill Road is, uh, has, wasn't sanded and is sheer ice and it's preventing oil trucks from doing deliveries to the customers on that road. And uh, Steve said that he has sent in that request and also asked if those residents had called in that uh, 
complaint as well. And that's it for me. Thank you. Thank you, Barb. Uh, we'll move to uh, Councillor Patterson. Anything tonight, sir? Uh, thank you, Warden. Yeah, just one small thing. Uh, I, I took a drive out Sunday afternoon or so, and uh, some of the roads were still ice covered, uh, snow covered, uh, and drove to uh, North Sydney. And one of the things uh, we always prided ourselves on was you could tell the county line because of the condition of the roads. Ours were always a lot better than they would be in CBRN. Uh, and that wasn't quite the case Sunday. So I, I don't know if it was just a uh, getting used to having snow falling or what, but uh, a couple of people did mention how the road, uh, the Kemp Ted Road especially, was, was snow-packed and icy uh, well into Sunday. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And uh, we're the Deputy Warden, District 6. Yes, thank you, Warden. Uh, no real issues. The uh, the last, uh, I guess, washout of the shoulders in the English area was re uh, replaced or repaired here last week. So I've uh, been in touch with Steve and everything seems to be looking after. And uh, like Councillor McNeil said, uh, uh, the drivers seem to be doing a really good job at the snow clearing and stuff. Uh, of course, we'd all like to see beer roads all the time, but I think they've, uh, they've been doing themselves this year and uh, we haven't heard any complaints. So I'd like to say thank you to them for that also. And that's it for District 6. Thank you, sir. Uh, district number seven, Council I just, had, I just had one report, which I uh, contacted Steve about, is uh, when they did the shoulders of the road on Ocean View Drive, one of the culverts were plugged, which was causing flooding and for it to freeze on, on the road. And also I got a report that there was a rumor that the um, front end loader was removed from north of Smoky. Uh, I haven't heard back from Steve, and, and I'm wondering if this is true, and if so, why? Um, but I, I did put an uh, email out to Steve, and I'm just waiting to hear back. Okay. Thank you, Jackie. Appreciate that. Uh, Councillor McDonald, anything up in District 8, please? Oh, yes, thank you, Warden. Just uh, one thing I had a, a call from constituent in regard to a culvert that is blocked or partially collapsed in in uh, Bay Road Valley. The civic number there is 2750. He said it's not something that needs to be looked at immediately, but sooner than later. And I'll, I'll also uh, send uh, Steve an email in regard to that, uh, that cover as well. And that's it for up in number eight. Thank you, sir. We're, uh, we're gonna start with district concerns and we're gonna stay in district eight. So we'll start with you, Councilor McDonald, if you would. Warden, just before you, we go there, oh, uh, there yeah. was a question from Facebook. Um, okay. So Jennifer McDonald asked if there was any possibility of an examination of the bridge on the 105 before the red burn, which is where the truck went off there on Friday. Uh, there's been three major accidents with vehicles sliding off the road there. It probably seems uh, worth looking into in that area yeah. too. Yeah, um, certainly related, Jennifer, that we will definitely look into that uh, first thing tomorrow. And it's a good question, and we appreciate the, the inquiry. But we'll definitely send something to uh, Public Works first thing tomorrow morning. Any other Public Works issues before we move? Good. Thanks. Uh, we'll go back to Councilor McDonald, District Concerns. Yes, sir. Thank you, Warden. Um just a couple this evening, I had I had a phone call from uh, actually two seniors in the area with regard to uh, the two current power images we had, the one just prior to uh, Christmas and the one we had Saturday. And uh, their concern was that they had lost total use of landline. And they said that that problem never arose before until the fiber off came through the area. But they checked, I checked in again with them on on um, Sunday and they said the same thing, they had no landline whatsoever use and they, they tried to go on to, uh, to uh, I guess it's Bell and 45, 50 minutes waiting on the phone. So they're asking me if there's any way maybe that we could have something that could come out or do we have access to a number or something that we could call on their behalf? Because it's very important that's the only source of the communication they have during and it seems to only it, it is only when the power is power issues have occurred in this area and I don't know I remember it was last year was there something to do with battery packs or something that they weren't 
I remember former Councillor McGinnis had spoke something about that. Yeah, I know he referenced it in a couple of conversations that he had with Alliant, and uh, I think what we'll do is uh, ask CAO to get in contact with the Alliant representative for the area and find out what the why that issue is uh, happening, particularly during our images. And I also think I'll uh, touch base with the senior safety officer and reiterate this to her as well, and maybe she can help us out on that. And uh, that's civic is. Five, four, seven, three, and Sugarloaf were the main trouble had uh, had been uh, located during the power outages. Um, secondly, I just would like to say that we have the bus finally operating in the north, and we're going to have a great big party north of Smallfield because the bus is finally running. So I just would like to uh, again thank Sheldon Wilkie, the driver, and for people to use the bus, it's up and running, and we're good to go. Uh, social media post has been made and uh, we're glad to have that back and lastly i would like to take one thousand dollars from my district budget for the masonic hall in cape north for hall upgrades i'd like to make that a motion please do we have a seconder for council mcdonald's one thousand dollar request seconded by council organ and all in favor contrary minded motions carried money has been approved great sir that's it thank you Thank you. Uh, Councillor Oregon, anything from District 7 this evening, please? Things have been pretty quiet since the, <laughs> the water road <laughs> issue. I just had one uh, call about uh, the water pooling at the bottom of Ocean View Drive. Um, when we had the water fixed there a while ago that they they thought they had had it fixed and it was great for a while, but now it's pooling again. So I don't know if it's a leak or if it's just um, an occurring pothole, but uh, it's, it's dangerous at the bottom of Ocean View. And that's all I have for tonight. Thank you. And we'll ask Public Works to take a look at that. I guess we end with that be. Yeah, um, it would probably show up in our skate system if it was a leak. Uh, I'm assuming, but um, we will send we will send one of our water operators down there to have a look. Yep, I'm sure they're they're monitoring it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Jackie. Uh, uh, Deputy Warden Duffy, anything tonight? Uh, yes, thank you, Warden. Uh, two items. Uh, first of all, let me make a motion that we send a letter to Minister Maslin of uh, Public Works for the Province of Nova Scotia. I uh, just want to say thank you for her response in regards to replacing the ferries in, uh, in Iona and in uh, English Town. Um, but I was wondering if she could advise why English Town is not being considered for a, uh, for a bridge. Uh, previously, the municipality was presented with a business plan that showed that the bridge was a cheaper than the ferry over a 75 year period. Um, where residents tax, do tax dollars are being used, uh, they should be used in the most economical way and financial uh, way that's possible. Uh, so I'm wondering if she could explain why uh, we've been presented with a, with a plan that says it's cheaper over 75 years and why they're not proceeding to uh, put a bridge in that location. So she could do that. Uh, I also want to note in that that the ferry service is not reliable, uh, especially in the winter months, uh, and can delay travelers for over an hour in the summer because of the lineups that are there. Uh, with the present ongoing investment of $130 million at uh, Destination Smoky, uh, the service uh, <laughs> without a bridge there, it hinders their, uh, their business. Uh, I've been involved in the uh, ski lodge there for 12, 14 years, and I can tell you when the ferry's out, we do not see people from CBRM. Uh, even though we do have a way around it, most people do not travel if the ferry is in, not in operation. So it's really going to hinder the, uh, uh, the investment that's being made at Smoky and for the whole winter tourism in, uh, in northern Victoria County. Um, I guess the other thing is uh, a bridge would, uh, would, would show uh, the province is really supporting the, the major investment that's happening in Inganesh. I mean, uh, they're doing this all on their own. It's time for the province to step up. And I think this would be a great way for the province to uh, show their support for uh, the North of Smoky area and in particular the, uh, uh, the destination Smoky. So I'd like to make a motion that that letter be sent to uh, Minister Ma uh, Maslin. Well said, sir. Do we have a second for that motion, please? Um, I saw Councillor Oregon's hand up first, so I will take her. Sorry, Councillor McNeil. All in favor? Contrary minded, motion is carried and the correspondence will be forwarded to the minister. Thanks very much. And the second one, again, is a motion for a letter to be sent to the federal minister of environment, uh, Minister Stephen uh, Gilbo, I guess it is. 
uh, reach snowmobile access uh, to communities located uh, around Cape Breton Highlands National Park. Uh, presently, Cape Breton Highlands National Park is completing their management plan, uh, and snowmobile access has been one of the main requests by residents in northern uh, Cape Breton and, and throughout the whole county, I should say, and also in Inverness County also. Uh, these, uh, I was going to say, communities around the park are being denied the economic boom that is being seen by other communities in Cape Breton uh, due to the large snowmobile product available in the Cape Breton area, especially in the Highlands. Uh, these communities have been very vocal in requesting access. Also, disabled members of the public uh, don't get in to experience the beauty of the Highlands. Uh, and by going by snowmobile, there's a lot of, not a lot, but there's disabled people that do have the ability to go by snowmobile and gives them access into the Highlands. Without this, the snowmobiles, they probably would never get in unless by helicopter. Um, I guess winter access by snowmobile would enable access to some of these individuals, but with the abundance of snow in the Highlands, there will be no impact on the ground or the environment. Uh, local clubs would welcome the chance to work with Parks Canada in a safe and environmentally friendly manner to provide access to surrounding communities. The municipality of the County of Victoria requests that Cape Breton Highlands National Park be instructed to work with the communities and snowmobile clubs to provide the required access into the uh, Highlands of Cape Breton. And I'll make that a motion. Thank you. Do we have a seconder for that? Seconded Second. by Councillor Longbutt. Sorry, excuse me. Uh, seconded by Councillor Longbutt. All in favor? Contrary minded? Motion scary, and my apologies, per liar heard her first. So, and that's it, Warden. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Uh, we're going to go to district number five, Councillor Patterson. Any district concerns this evening? Yeah, just two items. Thank you, Warden. Uh, I, I wasn't able to get in when you were making additions to the agenda, so I just want to mention this. Uh, I sent it to everyone, I believe, to report to councils uh, from the FCM uh, board meeting. And just a couple of highlights, quick ones. Uh, document uh, Partners for Canadians Recovery, Canada's Recovery, was released at that. Uh, closing the rural broadband gap and setting Canada on a path to net zero emissions. I mean, that they affect us all. We also heard and had discussed Discussions with uh, Dominic LeBlanc, Minister of uh, Intergovernmental Affairs, uh, Andrew Shear, Shadow Minister for Infrastructure and Communities, Rural Economic Development uh, Minister Goody Hutchings, who, by the way, is from Newfoundland, I believe rural Newfoundland too, so she has an insight to, uh, to what we're experiencing. And uh, finally, NDP leader uh, Jagmeet Singh. And in the document I sent, it gives some of the um, highlights of those discussions. And then finally, uh, the uh, FCM's Green Municipal Fund, and uh, there was some discussion at that. I did get a contact uh, there, and I think I forwarded them to the uh, but I think uh, board members or the committee even that's looking at that because there is funding available uh, for large infrastructure projects, new builds uh, that are there. So uh, you'd have to look and see if you qualify or not. Uh, secondly, and I sent this earlier too, I have a request and a petition for a road name change. Uh, the road is just numbered now. It's 5434 uh, Kempted Road. And the petition contains uh, the signatures of five of the six residents. So that puts us over the threshold, I believe. And they want to change the name of it to uh, Sand Piper Lane. So I'd like to make that a motion that council approve that uh, road name change. Thank you, Councillor. This also, Sorry, this also was sent to district planning uh, to check with Brian there to see that it meets the qualifications. And they have sent back that uh, road name petition form today with an approval on it. At the end, I can hardly hear what you're saying. Uh, as I understand it, we council approves it first, then it goes to TIR, then it goes to district planning. It's, it's a process. That's why it's been in the past anyway. So district planning has approved it. I, I can't, can't make out what you're saying. Fraser, can you hear me? District planning has approved the name change. Now we're, we're losing. Yeah, I, yeah, that's right. But we have to approve it first. And then yeah. it goes to TIR. And then it goes to district planning. They make the okay. final decisions. Right. So you so make a motion. motion that Victoria County Council approve. We, yeah, we, we're, we're approving it. But we don't have the final say, no. Gotcha. So we need a seconder for uh, Councillor Patterson's motion, please. Second. Yeah. 
Seconded by Councillor Longdahl. In favor? Aye. Contrary, my dear. The, the motion is carried. And good. Thank you. Sorry, okay. we're just having little technical problems there. Fraser <coughs> said we're good. Uh, we're going to go to uh, district number four. Uh, yeah, I just had a couple things. Uh, the major concern in this area that I keep hearing from constituents is is our lack of cell service uh, all around the harbor and in South Haven, and especially after the disasters that we are having, the natural disasters is a, a real worry for people that uh, that don't have cell coverage. And because of the uh, severe weather that we're having, it and I and it's directly related to climate change. I wondered if there's any any action that we can take um, as far as uh, climate change. If there's something that we could do um, to to help with it in in some way, like be leaders in that and spearhead something. And that's just a question putting out there to everyone, because uh, it's uh, as I see it here. There's more and more devastation with the storms are getting bigger and uh, the rivers are overflowing. And uh, I don't know what we can do if there's even small acts that we could do as a municipality to uh, be examples for everyone. No, that's it's it a, for me. That's uh, that's a, that's a very uh, legitimate observation and I, it's, it's here. Um, I think that's something that we'd, we're not going to resolve here this evening, but I, I think uh, if we could have a uh, further conversation on that part, and I, I think that's something that maybe it's, there is a role for council either to form a committee or to look at it. And I uh, know Councillor McNeil has his hand up and uh, he's going to weigh in. Go ahead, yeah. sir. I know in the past council and the broadband committee has discussed, uh, especially uh, when, we, when we did upgrade the tower in Middle River, helped upgrade that. I think that area was to be looked at next uh, for, for council to look into. To, I know it's been a few years, uh, it's uh, it's got a lot to do with the upgrade of broad broadband that slowed it down, and uh, I think we should take a serious look at, at uh, if there's any funds available to to work with one of the the providers to have towers put up in that area. We actually have done some work um, with we've partnered with a couple of other municipalities to try and get uh, funding from the Universal Broadband Fund. Uh, I think a tower is hundreds of thousands, if not a million dollars. Um, and I think that there's three towers that are needed in that area for uh, proper cell coverage. Um, we've been looking for federal funding for years and uh, there doesn't seem to be any and Bell doesn't seem to have any uh, appetite for putting anything there because they're not seeing the uh, cost value for it. Uh, we have been pushing it. Um, we, uh, again, we put in this application, uh, joint application uh, with First Nations and with other municipalities. We're waiting to hear, but we've been waiting to hear back on that since I think it was, it must be like May that we put that application in. I thought it was prior to that. Yet. It might have been. It was. It was sometime in the spring. So that but it is. It's frustrating. It's frustrating. Yeah. So that kind of addresses the uh, broadband cell phone. The, um, the climate change is another conversation. I guess that's what I was kind of alluding to, um, Barb. But can we just uh, you referenced it here tonight? Can we just leave it there tonight? And yeah. we're just yeah. going to have to sit down and have a conversation about our involvement. I know that there's two or three different organizations around the lake that are looking at some of these issues now. And so with that FCM, Fraser sent a, an FCM sur survey that went around and cellular was part of that survey too. So hopefully FCM is working on that problem too. Yep. Thank you. All right. And maybe that's an initiative that uh, 
uh, you can lead through council for as far as the climate change, but it's timely and, and we're seeing it, it's here. And we just saw the impacts uh, within the last six weeks. Mm -hmm. So um, any other issues in uh, district concerns in district four or was that? Uh, no, that was it. But on a lighter note, I, I was talking to a constituent today and they told me that uh, they voted liberal their whole life until Keith Bain uh, ran <laughs> and uh, then they changed. So I just wanted to thank Keith Bain for taking time out of his very busy schedule to join us tonight. Very good. That's thank it you. for me. Councillor Lava, that's a shameless suck up to uh, MLA Bain, I got to say. <laughs> uh, Mr. Bain, enjoy. Leave, leave me alone, please. <laughs> All right, uh, we're going to move down to district number two, please. Councillor McLeod, anything tonight? Thank you, Warren. Uh, just a comment. Um, I have some concerns about uh, some residents about from the rapid test kits. If um, if we, I know the, they're in short, and um, but just want to make sure that uh, is addressed. And I know the province is looking uh, the way to bring them into Victoria County, uh, especially for our seniors, uh, business, and uh, uh, they're looking for right now. Our kids are in, the, in home, so. I think we can hold that uh, the school is giving some to the children, but especially for the seniors and the business and the people who go to work, the essential workers. Thanks. That's, thank you, uh, Councillor McLeod. Um, district number one. Uh, I think Keith Bain had his hand up to, uh, about that thank issue. You. Yes, just uh, one remark about that with the uh, the rapid test kits and everything that are on the go. It has just been crazy and we're nowhere near what we should be for rapid testing in this province and, and indeed in the country and it's getting worse. So the, I guess the only thing to ask people is try to be patient. We all want to have access to this, but I think we have to be realistic too and think that it may not happen. So we just have to be extra cautious. Thank you, uh, Mr. Bain. Uh, and I will just on that topic, just very quickly, as you know, I did send a, uh, a, uh, <clears throat> a letter to the Premier indicating our concerns and what we're hearing from our residents with their inability to access uh, some of the rapid testing. So with that, we're gonna go back to uh, Council McNeil and district concerns for you this evening. Yes, thank you, Wharton. Uh, there's a few uh, tonight. Still no street light in Sales Cove or Birch Point Causeway, uh, although I was talking to uh, Tom McSween from Nova Scotia Power. He did uh, say that he'd uh, put that on, on the schedule ASAP. Uh, FYI, there's the street lights on the bridge still aren't working. So that's probably a year and a half now that uh, they haven't been working. And uh, people have got their night vision used to it now. And uh, also I received a thank you card from the Barra Food Bank uh, for the donation of a thousand dollars. They thanked me, but they wanted to thank <coughs> the council for approving that also. So, and. Uh, just to everybody get your COVID vaccine and your booster. Yeah. Thank you very much, Councillor. Uh, Deputy Warden, I have uh, three things, just two that require a motion, but I'll deal with the uh, 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 items that don't require a motion. Uh, I circulated a letter today from uh, Brad McDonald in regards to uh, some of the concerns that he raised around the uh, planning advisory. Uh, committee for uh, Victoria County, which deals primarily with uh, zoning issues in the in and around the village of a deck. Um, I am <clears throat> setting up a uh, receive that correspondence forwarded to you, and we will be following up with the meeting with uh, uh, Director of Planning 
for the Sir Nova Scotia District Planning Commission uh, later this week with John Bain and I've spoken to him and let him know that I received a correspondence for it to him and that we'd be following up with, uh, with a meeting with him so he is in agreement. Uh, I think the CAO mentioned in her report that we, uh, she and I, as directed by council, met with the village of the deck. I also sent around to you the ministerial order that was received by the village. It is a public document. Um, they are currently looking at that ministerial order and following it, and they have uh, until I uh, believe the 1st of May to be in compliance and uh, our understanding after meeting with the commissioners that it's indeed their intent. So we will just follow through um, as they uh, fall into compliance with that ministerial order. There were a couple of questions about the impact on our staff and I'll just refer that to Leanne if she has any questions or comments that she wishes to make in regards to that matter. Yeah, so we just, um, we had a frank discussion with the commissioners about our role or whatever role we uh, are playing right now uh, to try and help them out. Um, and we have informed them that our time that is being spent on whatever it is that we're doing, we will be billing accordingly. Um, so we will be sending a bill on to the village. They are also going to get together and get back to us for another follow-up meeting in February, uh, where they let us know what their expectations of um, county staff are. Uh, or what their ask is for county staff, and we will see if we can accommodate because we are shorthanded right now as well. So. And we are billing for any services that we are provided as well. So um, the other uh, issue I just wanted to bring forward, I uh, received uh, correspondence um, earlier this month, and it's called uh, 1792 project follow-up and I'm just going to read this very quickly it's just one paragraph and there is a standard proclamation that comes with it so I'm going to read the very brief background and then just ask if council is interested in proceeding with the proclamation but this is basically what it says January 15th 2022 marks the 230th anniversary of a remarkable exodus that can claim not only to be the first but the largest single exodus of African descendants returning to the continent of Africa. We are following up with a request from December for your council to recognize this historic occasion to amplify this history in any way you can. So that is a request that we had would we proclaim, um, I guess to recognize January 15th is the 230th anniversary of the Exodus Nova Scotia to Sierra Leone as an essential part of the history of all Nova Scotian Canadians. We ask that municipal governments initiate an annual commemoration of the Black Loyalist Exodus on 15 ships to Sierra Leone on the anniversary of January 15th. We ask that Council recognizes that this is the responsibility of repairing the historic injustice of omission As this journey is rooted in the history of slavery and race of, race of, racism in Nova Scotia, thus not turning to those who have lived under the weight of that history for funding a memorial, but to consulting with those communities. So there is a uh, proclamation that is four paragraphs long that I will forward out uh, to uh, council this, e this evening. And uh, it's uh, fairly straightforward wording. And uh, I just want to know um, if council is in agreement with uh, making the pro proclamation. Is that a motion anyway. important? Yes, we need a motion for that, Debbie. Okay. You've made that motion? Uh, yeah, no, unless you want to make a motion yourself. Or... Oh, I'm sorry, I, I will make a motion. Good point. I'll okay. make a motion that uh, uh, January 15th, 2020, uh, 2022, uh, we recognize as the day of Black Florida's exodus. Okay, we have a motion on the floor. Do we have a seconder for that motion? Seconded by Councillor McNeil. All in favor? Contrary minded. Motion passed. Thank you. And um, we will do up the proclamation and forward it. Um, the second item is from my district budget $5,000 for the waterfront for that project. Uh, be, uh, if so required by waterfront for deck, 
Um, so I'll make that a motion at the $85,000 that I have provided for my district budget. Okay, motion on the floor, seconder for that motion. Second. Second by Councillor McLeod, all in favor? Contrary minded, motion passed. Thank you, Deputy Warden. Thank you, Council. Uh, Deputy Warden, just before you move on, uh, Ward, I just have a question or a couple of questions about the, the letter from uh, Mr. McDonald. Uh, I got a call about this issue, too. And um, I just to correct my own thinking, and the, both the person I was talking to and um, Mr. McDonald's letter indicate that council has a vote on this. Uh, that that's not accurate, is it? Uh, not we will at some point uh, have to vote on it, but there is a process that has to be gone through and the process that's okay. started. Yep. But there has to so, be a, a public hearing and that public hearing has to be publicized. And once it's that pub, the date of the public hearing is publicized, then people that are either for or against the amendment. So, so what Mr. McDonald is referring to then are, are things that haven't happened yet. Uh, that's that anything should happen. Right? That's that's yeah. correct, is it? That that'll be yeah. part of the process. Yeah. yeah. Um, again, you know, I, I got a kind of a phone call out of the blue and uh, got some information on it. Um, but if, if council does have to make a final decision, um, you know, you can see the. Uh, and, and I guess it comes thinking about it when I got the letter today. You know, we represent our district, but we also represent the whole county. So, I mean, what, what affects Padec uh, affects all of us. What affects uh, Middle River affects all of us. What affects Ross Ferry affects all of us. So uh, that's the kind of thinking I guess we have to have. And, I, and you know, for my part, I just want to be clear on what the issues are and, uh, and so on. Anyway, okay, I'm up, up, yep. uh, over and out. <laughs> and and uh... And we just received that correspondence this afternoon, uh, Councillor, so that's why it is just distributed to you right away. And uh, certainly any questions, concerns that will be coming up, we'll be meeting with uh, with John Bain and we'll be bringing back uh, uh, both Councillor McLeod and I sit on that committee. It is Committee of Council and um, we will be bringing back the information to Council. Yeah, thank Councilor, you. Thank you very much. No, good yeah. question. Councillor McNeil. Yeah, to, just further with that, uh, but is it is it council's issue or is it the village issue? Like it's village planning. Would it go through the village first or? No, uh, the committee itself is a committee of council. That's even though it is uh, the majority of uh, zoning and land use issues happen within the village. It is uh, the planning advisory committee is a is a committee of council. Okay. So it is currently, it, it has to be approved by the county council. Um, it is a planning advisory committee that is set up right now, but there was a request in the several meetings ago to see if we could have it set up um, with just village residents because it's village zoning. Um, we are in the process of trying to figure out how to get it to be an area advisory committee. Rather than a planning advisory committee, that would make it more specific to BDAC, where it could just be BDAC count or sorry, BDAC commissioners. Um, but we're kind of at a standstill while there's a ministerial order going on with BDAC also. So um, we're kind of at a hurry up and wait here right now. Yes, and to your point, Leanne, that uh, eighty percent of any of the issues that deal with uh, land use or Sony usually happen within the confines of the village boundaries. Uh, we do have uh, an area along the shore road uh, that is outside of the village uh, boundaries, which is captured under the uh, zoning district. So that's why the county is also uh, involved as well. So, all right, so we will update as, as, uh, as we uh, get uh, our meeting with uh, Director Bain, and uh, we'll report back to Council. That's that are, are the only district concerns I had this evening. Uh, are there any um, uh, that will be monitored virtually? Does anybody uh, that is joining us from the public, does anybody have any questions or comments before we? And no, nothing. Um, uh, 
Keith Bain did mention though that uh, related to Jennifer McDonald's comment that uh, for the bridge where the truck went off, that is something that's always done. Uh, there, the ins an inspection is done when the infrastructure is jeopardized. So he will be confirming with uh, Steve related to that as well. Um, and I think what we're missing or what, what was added to the agenda was related to street lights. And I think that that is the next piece. Right, and Barb, you have your hand up. Is that in relation yes, I do. to- Well, thank you for giving <laughs> um, me the reminder. <laughs> Go ahead. It's it, it's not in regard to what you were uh, about that issue. It was actually about Perla's um, and the uh, rapid testing because I just got a thing on uh, on Facebook that there is going to be a rapid testing thing in Bedeck tomorrow at the Bredor Yacht Club, and they are probably going to have some extra tests that they're giving out. It says on this. Uh, they have a whole list of different ones, but the one at the Bredore Yacht Club is tomorrow from 11 to three. And uh, it says that there, yeah, it's a pop-up test and that apparently there, there, there could be some take home rapid tests available at that. Good. That's it. Thank Good you info. Good info. Um, and the item that uh, we overlooked, I overlooked, my apologies was the uh, street light policy and uh, uh, Councillor Long, that you brought that up, what, what exactly is it that uh, we can help you with on that one? Well, the, um, I already used my two street lights that I had like in the first year that I was here and every year we're supposed to have two, but then it's supposed, there's supposed to be a review of the policy. Like, and, and so I've had several requests, but whenever I requested, it's brought up that there's gonna be a review of the policy. So I just thought, when are we gonna have the review of the policy? So I know what to tell people when they ask me. Yep, good, good question, good point. I'll refer back to uh, the end, see what the status of that uh, policy yeah, is. Yeah, sure. I don't so know we how should... to take my hand down, so. <laughs> um, we will be setting up a, we're gonna try and, um, start with the policies that we have. We're in, the, we're in a policy bylaw sort of revision stage. Um, we're gonna start with some of the policies that we already have and see if there's amendments that, that should be made. I feel like there's not enough information that's in the streetlights right now, a streetlight policy, like does it point at the road? Is it for safety purposes rather than in someone's driveway? Um, I know at our last meeting, there was a moratorium that was put on streetlights until we overview the policy. So um, in the next couple of weeks, we'll be setting up a policy uh, review uh, with council, uh, a, a streetlight policy review. Yeah, I, I feel like the, that there's got to be so many streetlights that the county's paying for now after like it's insane. many years of like people given each councillor having 10 or 12. Yeah. And now it's down to two. So I'm just thinking like, can, is there no way that we can find out uh, about every one of those lights and maybe oh. many of the lights are not even being used anymore, you know, so that we could maybe take we do have a list. and put somewhere else. Sorry. We do have a list of all of them and okay. um, I, something tells me there's, uh, I, I can't remember if it's 400 or 4,000. <laughs> Probably and uh, you know at, at some point we have to decide do we really need more or what's the purpose of them because if they went in someone's you know I can't tell how the policy went but um, if we don't have enough stipulations around what the purpose of the street lights are for um, then each of you are and all residents are paying for all these street lights that could be in somebody's driveway. Um, so I, it is something that is important and we need to look at. Um, so we will be setting something up in the, in the near future. Thank you. We were, we were talking Great. about it yesterday, uh, today actually, the street light policy. So we'll be setting that up. All right, and we, uh, we uh, just for a little, Brief history with there were times that we had a moratorium on, on street lights and uh, generally two was maximum in my time and, and the other years uh, there were none. So it's a good time to have that conversation and we look forward to having that policy brought back to council. In fact, that's why we 
initiated the policy a number of years ago was to try to get a handle on some of these uh, streetlights. Um, any committee reports? Nothing from myself. Okay. Uh, and the correspondence we dealt with? Everything has been sent out, yes. And everything, everything that I've received back has been sent to council and everything that we have sent out has been sent to you as well. All right, well, that concludes our council session for this evening. Um, we just need a motion to um, adjourn. And thank you very much for your time and attention this evening. We have a motion to adjourn. I'll move. Thank you, Councillor McNeil. We are adjourned.